Here's the iPhone 14. The screen is completely broken at the top of the device and I'm going to do a screen replacement on this smartphone. For iPhones, the screen replacement does not cost much. I got my new screen for $30. Here's my new screen for this iPhone 14. Obviously, this is not an original screen being $30. To start, you need to remove two screws at the bottom of the iPhone. This is the first step before we can remove the screen. The screen replacement on this iPhone 14 applies to the iPhone 14 Pro, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the iPhone 14 Plus. So now I'm hitting the front of the device in order to soften the double-sided tape that is between the screen and the frame of the device. I'm currently using a heat gun, but you can use a hair dryer to do this, but it is going to take much longer since the hair dryer does not have the same heat output as a heat gun. So I tried using a big suction cup, but it wasn't working because the screen is cracked and I used a smaller suction cup which does not work also. So the only thing left to do is to use a sharp blade in order to lift one portion of the screen just slightly in order to add a guitar pick between the screen and the frame of the device. If doing this, make sure that you add a little bit of alcohol on the area where you're going to use the blade to lift the screen. And also make sure that you're careful because it might leave a little bit of scratch on the area where you work and lift the screen. Once you have a tool between the screen and the frame of the device, you simply need to take a guitar pick and run it on the four corners of the device in order to detach the screen from the frame of the device. One thing that you should be careful about is the left side of the device where you have the volume button. There is a cable coming from the motherboard attached to the screen. You need to be careful not to damage that cable. The part on that area of the screen is not very expensive, but if you change it, you might have some issues with the software lock that Apple use. Before we can completely remove the screen out of the device, you need to remove two retaining plates. These retaining plates are covering the flex cables. You need to remove those before you can detach the flex cable from the motherboard. In my case, since the screen is broken and the touch screen is not working, so that is why I didn't turn off the device before removing the flex cables coming from the screen. For these flex cables, since the battery cable is still connected to the motherboard, you should use a plastic tool to disconnect them. Here's the old screen of this iPhone 14. The only thing that we need on this old screen is the sensor at the top of the screen. So this sensor is held by two screws at the top near the camera and the sensor at the top and also double-sided tape or some type of glue that is attached to the flex cable of that sensor. You need to use the same screwdriver that you use to remove the retaining plate in order to remove the two screws for the sensor. After removing the retaining plate for the sensor, you need to hit the front of the device before we can start pulling the sensor slightly and slowly. So here I hit the front of the device directly on the sensor area for 11 seconds before I started to pull on the sensor. So now in order to remove the sensor, you simply need to pull slightly and slowly and you should not pull with a lot of force because you risk to damage the cable. When I was pulling, I felt that it was getting a little bit harder to pull the sensor. So I hit the front of the device again and I started to pull on the cable. Anytime it gets a little bit difficult to pull the sensor and you risk to damage it, just hit the front of the screen. It is going to make everything easier in order to remove this sensor. So if using a hair dryer, you might hit the area of the sensor maybe twice as much as using a heat gun, maybe for 20 seconds instead of 10 seconds each time you pull the sensor. I'm taking my time in showing the whole process because this sensor is pretty much the thing that is going to enable your face ID and make your device disable a lot of stuff. Currently 90% of the cable has been removed out of the old screen but at the top near the cameras you have a lot of small cables that you need to be extremely careful while removing because those are very small and if you pull it hard it might break. Now that the sensor is completely detached from the old screen you simply need to reattach it on the new screen in the same area where you had it on the old screen. Make sure that you install properly the smaller part of the proximity sensor near the camera area before you apply pressure to the other end of the cable and have it completely installed on the new screen. This step is critical. You need to turn on the device with the new screen and test your new screen to make sure that everything is working properly. Test Face ID and test the cameras and make sure that everything is good before you proceed in closing the screen. You will get this notification saying that the screen that you just installed on your iPhone 14 is not a genuine screen. You will always get this notification even if the screen come directly from Apple 
I tested the iPhone 14 with this new screen. Everything was working properly. I didn't have any problems despite having the error message saying that the screen is not genuine. Currently, I'm putting back the retaining plate that was on the proximity sensor and added the two screws that were there. Now you simply need to install the screen on your iPhone 14 and add the retaining plate before you seal the device. If your screen comes with a double-sided tape that is of good quality, you can simply install the double-sided tape before you reinstall the screen on your iPhone 14 and after that you can simply close the device. You can also use B7000. Here I did add a small layer of B7000 on top of the double-sided tape that was already inside the frame of this iPhone 14. Then after that I simply closed the device. So the screen that I got for this iPhone 14 is not an original screen and at the top of the screen you can see that the notch is way longer than what it should be. This is why Face ID is acting up in this case. Please make sure that if you get a new screen for your iPhone 14, the screen at the top, the notch looks the same as your old screen. In my case, that is the primary reason Face ID was not working when the screen was on the device. When the screen was off the device, Face ID was working properly and I didn't have any problems. So for this iPhone 14 screen, I'm going to return this one and get another screen about $35 and have that screen installed on this iPhone 14. The process is the same regardless of the screen that you get and you should not have any issues as pertaining for Face ID and any other software lock stuff for this iPhone 14. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe, like and share and I will see you on my next video.